Hey, what's up? Welcome to another exciting video with uh, PGBlitz.com. So, kind of part of, so kind of going through a little bit of this transition, so I do apologize. So, with this video, we're going to talk about PG Shield and the importance of it. So, uh, we just kind of did the traffic video. Um, so, what PG Shield's basically going to do is going to provide protection for all your Docker containers. So, we're going to look at the situation right here. So, right here, this is a website that I have at netdata. Uh, ffplex.com so the problem here is is that if I basically just pop in this domain um, basically you just see everything in the open and this is bad so originally we had uh, traffic authentication kind of built in to protect you but it was kind of annoying because every time you would visit a different container you would have to put in a password over and over again so ultimately this is a bad situation now, if you're on a home VM, um, this is not going to really matter as much. PG Shield is basically meant to work if you have a domain and you have, uh, it's basically on the internet, like your actual virtual machine or your host, your server, whatever you're running this on. So PG Shield is not meant if you're running at home. So you're going to get a little confused. Also, take note, this is for Cloudflare users and DuckDNS users. In order for uh, in order for this to work, what happens is when PG Shield authenticates itself working, it's going to look for Portainer, right? So if I go to Portainer, right, and I you know I should be able to get here, because if you can't get here, it's not going to work. And, and there's a reason why I built that in. If you cannot reach Portainer, that means something's either jacked up with your domains, or something's not going to work properly. So by putting that check in, it kind of prevents that. You know issue you're like hey I, I, basically <laughs> it's a troubleshooting step so anyways one piece of advice is it will let you go through the process but it will refuse to deploy if port guard is open which I'm gonna in the future I'll kind of set up before you even hit this menu interface I've been kind of doing checks like that in the program so the first thing you want to do is close out port guard why is that bad well PG shield when you deploy it from another project it deploys a docker container which uh, all your containers I don't know how to explain this but all your containers are going to talk to that one specific container it's called O authentication when you see it here it's not up so what happens is when you directly type the port there's nothing that we can do um, even if you throw up other reverse proxies other programs to, to, to kind of help with your domain if your ports are open well guess what people can access your stuff so it's going to be useless so in this case I'll type uh, the domain and I'll type, um, what was it, 9000? Yeah. Okay, so I typed basically the domain and then slash port 9000. And you already noticed saying that this is not secure. So <laughs> bad for two reasons security, because there's not uh, encryption. And then there's direct access to the port. So what you need to do is you need to close it out. So in this case, it's relatively simple, right? We're just going to go here. And so basically, we're going to go to port guard. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit. So right now, this is the emergency log. Warning, traffic deployed with ports open, server at risk for exploitation. So you notice we put some checkers in. It'll, it'll annoy the crap out of you unless you go to settings and you turn this off. But I wouldn't recommend to do that. OK? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to port guard, which is number two, and close ports. That's pretty much it. So what's going to happen is it's going to rebuild all your containers. And it, what it's going to do is it's going to pretty much close out the ports that are just wide open. So it shouldn't take too long because I really don't have too much up. So right now it's rebuilding portainer. And then we're going to check to see if it we can still access it, which we shouldn't be able to. So I'm going to go to google.com, and then what I'll do is I'll type uh, portainer ffplex, all right, no matter. And you see that it doesn't work. See? Great. So good job, port guard. Pretty simple, right? Looks easy to run. <laughs> it was hell to code. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to PG Shield, and then you're given the option to utilize ours or a forked version of it. So basically the forked version is you, you take ours, modify it to what you want, and then you deploy 
your version here. So 99% case use, you're gonna use ours. It's also good for testing too. So it's cloning it, and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring up the interface, and there we go. So right here, here's some key things that we have to do. We have to set a web client ID in secret. We're gonna to have to authorize a user. We're gonna be able to exempt certain applications, and then we're gonna be able to deploy PG Shield. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and check out the wiki, which I highly recommend, or you can follow this. And what we're gonna have to do is follow these basic steps. So first, you need to make sure that you have a G Suite business account, so very key. And uh, basically, you know, it's like the one for the Google Drive. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna visit Google's API console. These are the steps that we're gonna go ahead and follow below. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click this link. So the good news is that this is gonna take you directly uh, to the page that you need to get to if you're already signed in, that's the key. So the biggest thing that's gonna nail you on your head is, is that you obviously need to make sure that you pick web application. You'll notice that in the instructions here that if you fail to do that, um, it will cause headaches. Because if most of you use the, uh, the GCE edition, I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this one because the other pages already got it up. Most of you will pick other from the GCE edition, so I'm just warning you, just take your time and go through this slowly. And then what we're gonna have to do is we can name it whatever, and then in the authorized redirect URIs, we have to put this exactly. So I have a link here for you, but the thing you need to change out is your domain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. So we already have that. So we're gonna go ahead and do web application. And then we're gonna call this uh, blitz test whatever you want and then authorized redirects if you fail to put this in it will not redirect correctly and it will well ultimately not work um, and make sure that you're putting in the domain that your actual um, thing is set up for traffic because if you do anything different it's not gonna work properly so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that real quick so we're gonna do ffplex Dot com. Oh, and I forgot this is in the wiki too. So we're going to go ahead and open new tab. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and put in the domain. So it basically just, I just have to authorize it, which makes perfect sense. And then press enter. And that's pretty much it. Um, if it's not letting you save, it's because you got to put some, some nonsense down here. I don't think you have to do the privacy link in that, but you might have to do the home page. You, you, it's kind of obvious. You'll, you'll figure it out. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. Okay. So that makes sense now. So I'll have to refresh this page. I even kind of forgot that step for a second, <laughs> even though it's in a wiki. Um, blitz test. And then we're going to go ahead and do that. I wish Google kind of just said, hey, just go ahead and add it. But they put stuff for a reason. They want to make sure that your security is good. Okay, so now it says that this will be authorized. So as long as you got the set with your correct domain, along with the one you're using with traffic, you should be okay. So we're going to go ahead and create this. And right there is going to be the client ID and the secret. It's good if you keep that. Uh, if you if you keep that then you'll you'll be fine so that's that's what I would recommend just put in the text pad or you just come back here whatever whatever it is that you want to do so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and then we're gonna go ahead and set the web client and so we're gonna paste it and make sure you paste it exactly make sure it has everything in it don't have any spaces that first space is okay but just make sure that you have it as is because there's nothing we can do to check you on that. So, and I've, I've had people that have mentioned that said, hey, I've grabbed the wrong keys from the wrong domain. That's gonna cause you a problem. So make sure you're just double checking off. And don't worry about it, I've actually done it before. So I sat there and I was wondering like, what the heck is going on? Okay, so next thing is, it's gonna be authorized users. So I this may look really simple, but it, it, was, it was fun. It, it's simple for you. So what you need to do is you need to add the authorized users that you wanna allow to log in. 
So in this case, I already have user at plexguide.com. See? And you can add multiple users if you want. So I can call it junk at plexguide.com. And again, if you don't have these users in here, when they go to the page, you'll say not authorized. Um, if you're just a little bit of a tip, if let's say the main account you bump into says not authorized and you forgot, you're going to have to come back here, make sure you add it and then redeploy the container. And then you need to make sure to clear and close your browser because what's going to happen is it's going to kind of hold on to all that information. Okay. So right here, here's the view authorization list. See, so pretty much simple. And then we're going to do remove at plexguide.com. So we can show that to remove user works. See so there's authorization list you see right there. And the user we're going to move, remove at plexguide.com. And it's basically saying is that if I'm removing a user and I already have this deployed, I'll have to redeploy it. But again, for new deployments, you have nothing to worry about. And you see how the user is gone. So that's a good thing. And then you can remove all the users. I just did that. And again, it stops PG Shield, so you're gonna have to redeploy it again. Okay, so you're gonna exempt PG applications. So these are apps to uh, exempt. So these are uh, apps that you can select, and more will show up. I have there's a minor thing that I have to fix up. So for example, um, the reason you would want to use this is because it's not going to be a good day when you have users of Ambi right go to your subdomain and then. They're not an authorized user. You may be overly protective about security. For example, you may only have your spouse and your child and a friend only access it. So you could keep it locked in. You would just ask for their email addresses so they can validate. So again, the security is good, but if you have a lot of users, it may become a pain. Um, so for example, you may want to exempt Ambi or other applications that you have other people access. So it's up to you about if you want to do that. So I can go ahead and say, we're going to go ahead and exempt um, yeah, Ambi. Okay. And then, um, if you want to protect the app again, that's all you have to do is, um, you see right there how we have Ambi. So all you'd have to do is type that and it will protect it again. And this, this will do a mass reset on all the apps. Okay. So I know it's a lot of explanation to get to this point, but I just want you to thoroughly understand what we're doing this for. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna deploy PG Shield. And then it's gonna do validation checks. So it's gonna check, check, check. So there's that O authentication container that I told you about. And now it's gonna rebuild all your apps. And then we should be seeing it showing up in Portainer soon. I can tell the rebuilding works because it kicked me out. And just to show you proof that it's not it's working correctly, see how it says not authorized? So right now I'm signing in with a different account on, on this Chrome browser and it works just, just like I said it would. Okay, so I went to portainer.ffplex.com um, and you notice that it brought this up, which is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. And now you could see Portainer working perfectly. So basically that's what it did for you. And that's what PG Shield does. So there's that O authentication container. So when everything works, you'll be able to see everything. And you notice it says, hey, here's the whitelist, here's my client ID, all that good all that good jazz. So other than that, it's pretty simple. But like I said, the biggest thing that will nail you is, um, so for some reason, if you're signed in, just clear your browser. Because the thing is, you need to get to that uh, login authentication page. So that's, I say that's the only big tip out of all this. So make sure that you select the web client ID, make sure you have your browser cleared, and make sure that you're good to go. You have traffic set up, obviously. But other than that, this you know, the, hope, hopefully this video has been pretty useful for you. So if you could do me a favor, please subscribe and like, and then please check out our next videos.